Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Right, guys, welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Casey Foreman. I got a great show for you guys today. Let me go ahead and break down what I'm going to be discussing. Uh, so I'm going to start out with the guidelines and rules for the NBA's plans uh, in Orlando. Uh, specifically, though, the rules for the players, you know, in the bubble, the staff, everybody that's in the bubble, you know, the rules and guidelines they're going to have to follow. Next will be the uh, top free agents available to sign uh, for the NBA playoffs, you know, to play in Orlando. I'll also be discussing three players that I think have the most to prove uh, in this year's NBA's postseason. Uh, and then make sure you guys stick around to the very end of the show uh, because the Rockets GM uh, re- released a statement saying that he believes the Rockets should win uh, the NBA Finals this year. Uh, so stick around to the very end. You can hear me breaking that down, giving you guys my opinion on that. But like I said, I'm going to start off with the guidelines and rules that was just released for the players, uh, that the players and all the staff for the NBA are going to have to follow while inside the bubble in Orlando. Um, so like I said, the NBA released very spe- specific rules. Uh, all players and staff has to follow. Uh, the whole list that they sent to the NBA was over a hundred, 100 pages long. So they're taking this very seriously, which I, I appreciate. Uh, it seems like they're taking every, <laughs> every little detail into consideration, which I'll bring up, uh, once I'm discussing, uh, you know, the meat and potatoes of, of all the rules. Um, but yeah, it's over a hundred pages long. Uh, but what I want to do, Brian Windhorse from ESPN released an article, Touching on, you know, basically all all the most important parts of of this 100 page uh, guideline and and rule list. Um, so let's talk about that that uh, article from Brian. Um, so the most important thing, or the, the biggest question that's been on my mind, you know, is definitely what happens if a player, you know, hope, God forbid, hopefully this doesn't happen. Um, but what happens when it's not really if it's, it's it is probably when uh, a player gets tested positive for COVID-19, you know, in the bubble, what, what's protocol for that? Um, and, and they, they have plans for that. So it looks like uh, the player will be isolated and rested to make sure there isn't, uh, you know, a false positive. Uh, but what, if it is once again confirmed, the plates, the player will undergo uh, treatment in a period of rest and recovery that is at least, at the very least, it'll be for 14 days if a player does test positive. Um, so it's, it seems like they're taking the right protocol, the right the right prior steps. Um, they have a plan in place. Seems like a right plan, but man, two weeks, uh, if not longer, which is appropriate, definitely. But when you're talking about, hopefully this doesn't happen, but you know, if a player catches it, or, or gets the virus once, once the playoffs start, you know, the, he's missing a round or, or so of the playoffs. And if it's a big player like, like Anthony Davis or a big rotational player, uh, for any of these playoff teams, that can be detrimental to their roster and their playoff hopes. Um, so, so, um, hopefully that doesn't happen, but it's good to hear they have a plan, uh, for if it, if, if it does happen. Um, it also says that players will be restricted from, exercise, uh, cardi, 
uh, let's see, restricted from exercise, any anything uh, related to basketball until they can pass cardiac uh, tests. Um, again, they have to pass multiple tests, go through many different uh, things to be able to play again. So it does look like they're taking the proper protocol uh, if a player does get tested properly. Uh, and now another big question, you know, will these players be tested every day? How often are these guys going to be tested for Corona? Uh, because they're going to be going out in, in the midst of this bubble, obviously, yes. But but you can't control everybody that, that has come into the bubble, you know, like the, like the uh, workers at the hotel, you know the cooks, uh, the 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 manicure pedicurists, the pe- pedicurists that are going to be there. You know, lots of things are going to go into that. Um, you can't necessarily be too sure. So you want these players getting tested somewhat regularly. Um, and the league says exactly that. The league says regular testing will uh, undergo. Uh, it looks like at at the start. It will be less than daily, um, but if if they need to, it looks like they have the proper uh, resources to test the players daily if needed. Um, obviously, they're going to try to restrain from that, try to save as many tests as possible. If they don't need to be tested, don't. But still, these players are going to be in contact with each other every single day, and the more the better. You know, the the more the better, the safer you can be, the better. Uh, seems like they they the league totally agrees on that and won't be every day but again it seems like they it could be every day if needed um, and let's see how many oh oh very big question how many people would have to test positive for the league to be on pause you know to, to be stopped again uh, it says it is not exactly spelled out uh, but it is clear that the league is preparing for positive tests on this subject the document says only this the occurrence of a small or otherwise expected number of COVID-19 cases will not require a decision to suspend or cancel uh, the season. Okay, so that, that's saying that they are planning for for a small number of people to have it. And if people do get it, just, just because some people do get it, excuse me, does not mean uh, that they're going to stop the season right away. Like I just said, they have plans in place for when these players, just in case these players do, um, and it looks like there aren't any necessarily any plans to stop the season if more than it, players get it than expected. Uh, you know, this is, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, you know, I think a lot of the smart and, and, and wealthier players do, a lot of the owners do, the, the league does, you know, they're going to be losing so much money. I think, I believe it's in the billions, you know, how much money they're going to be losing if they do end up canceling this season, which is going to, you know, wreck up this, wreck the salary cap, uh, you know, potentially hurt the CBA that the players currently have with, with the league, which currently is in favor of the players more, more than the, the more than the, uh, execs in the league. Uh, you know, right now it's more of a 50 50 split with, with the, uh, all the earnings. Uh, but it looks I've, I've heard today that, you know, if the league does get canceled, we, we could see the owners because they will be taking a, a huge hit. Uh, we could see the owners changing the CBA. There is, there is a rule in that CBA contract, somewhat of like a uh, Armageddon rule that, you know, if, if, if the worst possible scenario does happen and we do have to cancel this, the owners, you know, have a right to rip up the CBA, start a new one and that doesn't necessarily have to be in, in favor of the players like it is now. Um, so, again, that could be detrimental to the players and their relationship with the league. Um, so we definitely want this season to keep going, um, and it seems like the league is on the same page uh, Same page with that. Um, let's see. What happens if a player doesn't want to go uh, to Orlando? Let's see. If a team determines a player is at high risk uh, for getting COVID, you know, from past illnesses and such, uh, that player could be a protected player who does not have to report and will, again, will not lose any of their pay. Uh, again, that, that would be a protected player because of their prior history with, Ill, with illnesses. A guy that comes to mind for me is like JaVale McGee has had certain illnesses in the past, uh, you know. I don't know exactly exactly what his situation is, but but uh, a guy like Javale McGee could be a guy we see on that protected players list, not not going to play uh, because of his past, and and uh, you know it could not be safe for him, you know, ultimately for his life to go play, and ultimately I know he doesn't risk that just for one season, just for another championship run. 
Um, so a guy like JaVale McGee could be a player we see in that protected list. Um, but let's keep moving on. Uh, additionally, three medical experts will, re- will review players and their you know their medical histories to, to see if they do have a higher risk of getting the virus. Uh, like I said, they won't be docked of any salary. They'll be protected. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, however, if a player, you know, just declines to go, won't, won't go play, he will lose a number of game checks. For example, uh, oh cool, Brian put an example in here. Uh, a player making 10 million a year will roughly lose a hundred thousand per game. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. So let's say, you know, an average NBA contract, but, you know, 10 million, not, not, not anything too high up there, but wow, that's a great example from Brian. If you, if a player is making about 10 million per year a game in Orlando, they'll be losing about a hundred thousand dollars. So definitely, uh, I wouldn't want to lose that. There's an incentive to play. Uh, so wow, that's some great information there. Um, and then players like KD and Kyrie who aren't able to play because of injuries, uh, will still receive their full amount of pay because, you know, it's not their fault. They cannot play you know due to these injuries as far as you know the older coaches and stuff because we we know the league like greg popfish or mike d'antoni we have some older coaches in the league um and and you know people over the age of 65 as we as we know are at a higher risk of getting the virus um so they have that uh somewhat thought of as well so like players teams might declare a coach or other staff member protected because of a high risk of severe illness. Uh, let's see. Again, it could be a coach over the age of 65. As protected, the league would uh, still pay them their salary. I don't believe they would get any docker pay. It's really just uh, life or death here, you know, for these older coaches, basically. And, and uh, for coaches that still want to go, they will be uh, reviewed by a physician, make sure they are healthy and in proper shape to go down to Orlando. Um, let's see if the physician determines the coach's risk factors present a direct threat to his health or another person's health. Uh, then he will not be allowed on onto the campus and won't be going to Orlando. Hopefully we don't see any coaches like that because for a team like the Rockets not having their head coach or like the Spurs not having their head coach, that will really throw a team off in this new environment, especially, you know, you need as many you know, people you know, the faces you know as possible. Uh, you know, you want to try to keep it as normal as possible uh, in a season where nothing is normal right now. Um, but still, you know, the more familiar, the better. And having your head coach there, a little, little home cooking for you can do nothing but make you feel better and make you feel more confident in that game plan, obviously. So hopefully we don't see any coaches, you know, higher in age have to um, sit out for the rest of the season. That, that would uh, be pretty upsetting to see. Um, and then let's see, as far as what life will be like at Disney World, okay? Let's break this down. Uh, so Brian thinks it's going to be a tough arrival. You know, when everyone gets there, oh, wow. You know, when everyone gets there, they are going to have to self-isolate in their hotel room for at least 48 hours uh, until and until they have at least two negative COVID-19 tests. Uh, this is said to make sure, you know, no one... At first, when they get to the bubble in Orlando, doesn't have the virus. So, you know, that's good. Checking off all the boxes there. Uh, players and staff cannot go into, oh, each other's rooms. Well, so players and staff can't go into each other's rooms until at least July 21st. Um, players also cannot talk to other ho- talk to other players or go see other players in other hotels until then um, to limit the outbreak, obviously. There are three hotels being used. Uh, each team is having their own personal chef, let's see, available 24 hours a day. They can eat uh, with other players outside, it seems like, just not inside. Uh, again, after those couple of negative tests happen. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. They'll have, you know, uh, food that can be delivered to their room, blah, blah, blah. 
Let's see. Everyone on campus will have a magic band, so basically gets them to the basketball work, the workout rooms, their their hotel stuff like that. Gets them into the medical screenings. Uh, each hotel room has a players' lounge. This is pretty cool. Uh, you know, has video games, card tables, ping pongs, and then or uh, ping pong tables. And then the the thing I brought up earlier that they're thinking about every single possible detail. This is something that kind of made me chuckle. So. Uh, they, they thought of this, no doubles, <laughs> no doubles in, in ping pong, only singles. So they can stay at least six feet apart. And then every time they play cards, that card pack must be thrown away and there must be a new card pack then for the next game or for the next day of games. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all in there. Black and white, uh, makes a lot of sense. And, uh, that's just really funny, uh, that, that's even something they thought of. So it makes me feel better, honestly. You know, they're thinking about every possible thing that could happen. What if they're playing ping pong and they stand too close to each other? <laughs> you know, they thought of it. And, you know, like I said, it seems to be checking off all, all the boxes that are possible. Um, people on campus can use the pools, trails, golf courses. Wow. Uh, teams will be able to work out and practice in three hour blocks in various spots around the uh, Orlando campus. Uh, so they're going to have multiple places to go. Uh, this is also another uh, a very interesting uh, factor um, that plays into it. So who will be, you know, who's who's going to Orlando for each team? Uh, the, the NBA has has given uh, each team, I think, a slot of 37 people allowed to be on campus for each team. Uh, obviously, they've expanded the rosters from 15 to 17 players. I'm going to talk about that in my next segment. Um, but they've expanded the rosters from 15 to 17 players. So it looks like so about 17 of those 37 will be made up of players. After that, they must have trainers strength coaches, equipment managers, security and front office personnel. Uh, they might even be encouraged to bring mental health professionals because they will be in a bubble for multiple months, and we know what that can do to some people's psyche. So so great. They're, they're being uh, promoted to bring mental health experts. That's fantastic. That's great, you know, preparing for, for what's ahead. Um, eventually, I believe family members will be able to go and join the bubble in Orlando for those teams still in the playoffs. I believe that'll be in the second round of the playoffs. We'll see if we have any more uh, information on that. Players won't be uh, required to wear masks during games or at games or anything like that. They will have to when they're, you know, with other players inside. Let's see. Games, uh, there will be games at three different arenas. There will be no outside fans, but we will see people in the stands. Uh, it looks like there will be a number of limited players that can attend games that are not playing. Uh, and they will be, let's see, there will be limited media, team executives, uh, and only some sponsors allow, allowed in. So those will make up, that'll make up the crowds in there. So we will have some people in the crowds, in the stands, in Orlando. Won't be any outside people i know they're gonna fill it up with like 2k sound noise and and fake fan noise in there so it's gonna be different obviously it's a process everybody's learning you know everybody is gonna be taking it day by day uh just trying to figure it out just trying to you know keep their head straight and focus on focus on the goal which is obviously to win an nba championship but uh, you know, from all these things that I've read from Brian, it really seems like they're taking the proper precautions. Like I said, all the team they're staying at three different hotels. You know, the top four seeds are staying at one hotel. Uh, let's see, the six non-current playoff teams are are staying with each other. Uh, the five through eight conference seeds are are staying in the same hotel. So they have them grouped also in like level of play and how they've been playing this season, which is also pretty funny. Um, they have the elite teams in the same one. That can be a little dangerous. So, you know, they have the Lakers, Clippers, Bucks own the same hotel. So if one person there gets it, because I don't know, hopefully we don't see a spread in that one hotel. But still, I don't know if that was the best idea, having all the best teams in the exact same hotel. Because, uh, again, what if we see a spark in that one hotel and all those players get it and are out for, are out for two weeks at least. So hopefully that's not the case but uh i like that the players are staying separately uh as far as drug testing players will be tested for performance enhancing sorry poor performance enhancing drugs uh unlike normal circumstances players will not have to be tested for recreational drugs 
Uh, players have been advised by the league that marijuana is illegal in Florida and it's banned in Disney World. So no smoking by the players allowed. No drugs, no recreational drugs allowed by the players uh, in Orlando. However, they won't be testing. They will, however, be testing for the enhancing drugs, which is good. You know, we want to make sure no one's getting on. We, uh, I was thinking we might be seeing LeBron in Miami in 2012, you know, after he, he went down to Miami, or maybe he was in Cleveland and went down to Miami. But anyway, not accusing LeBron of anything. Um, but, yeah, it's great they're taking the proper precautions for everything. I'm really excited to see. Uh, I believe players have until the 24th of June to respond to the plan, say if they're coming or not coming. Uh, it depends if they're a protected player, not a protected player, all that jazz. So they got about a week to figure all this stuff out. So within the next week, I'm thinking we're going to be getting a whole lot more of information uh, so stay tuned. But like I said, coming up next, I'm going to be talking about how they have expanded the playoff rosters from 15 to 17 players. And I'm going to break down some of the notable free agents uh, that could be signed in Orlando. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. guys welcome back to the gsmc basketball podcast uh if you missed it i just talked about the updated guidelines and rules for the players in orlando so if you miss it go ahead and go back and check that out um but like i said i want to talk about um the the nba rosters and how for the nba playoffs they have been expanded from 15 to 17 players uh, I really like this idea and this this move i think it's great for the league and, and i i would honestly like to see it excuse me, in the playoffs going forward, or maybe not up to 17, but maybe you can expand your playoff roster by one spot going forward. Excuse me. Um, but I really like this move a lot. Let's talk about it. Um, I think it really could benefit uh, multiple different teams. Uh, the first thing that popped to my mind is probably the Los Angeles Clippers. And that's because, you know, a team that has had injuries this entire season, uh, you know, Paul George has been in and out of the seat, or in and out of the lineup. Patrick Beverly in and out of the lineup. They added new pieces like Reggie Jackson, Marcus Morris to to add more depth. While just in case you know, a guy like Paul George was out or like Patrick Beverly, but yes, they've had people in and out of the lineup all season. Um, so so. A, a team that does have their roster kind of filled up yet, you know, unsure on certain spots of their roster, maybe like the point guard position. So, uh, I think it's a great idea for them maybe to go out and sign an unsigned for, uh, point guard right now or, or the Lakers. You know, the Lakers they have a couple of guys like Dwight Howard, um, Averly Bradley, who 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 both think you know right now might not be the time to play with everything that's going on in our country, rightfully so to them. Everyone's entitled to their opinion and how it should be handled, you know. Uh, so all the power to them for, for using their voice to say how they feel. Um, but in either way, those are guys who might not be there in Orlando. Uh, a guy like JaVale McGee, like I said in the last segment, who could be a potential protected player. Um, due to his past with illnesses and, and, and such. So, and, and he could be at a higher risk of getting the coronavirus and passing it on. 
uh, than, than another player would. So, so those are three guys on the Lakers roster who potentially might not be there in Orlando for the postseason. So, uh, it would definitely benefit a team like L, uh, the, the Lakers. You know, they could sign, they might need a big and a guard considering, you know, both two bigs and, and, and one of their better guards, uh, could sit out for the season. So it could definitely benefit the Lakers. Uh, another team that pops in my mind is the Utah Jazz. Uh, not a big contender this year. Uh, obviously, having a lot of hype, having a lot of hype at the beginning of the year, of the year, um, but not having it work out too well with Mike Conley and, and possible relationship issues issues now with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. Um, you know, and and now they're they're the best three point shooter on the team. Bob Danovich is now out for the season. And that is going to put a big hole uh, for that team. He he contributed to that team. Yeah, like I said, I, in my opinion, he's the best three point shooter, you know, sharp shooter on that team. Uh, so they're going to miss his offense. Uh, so they could go out and, and go and sign a three point shooter or a guy who can spread the floor as well. So so multiple teams I think can benefit from this. Um, let's talk about some free agents still out there. You know, the biggest name in my opinion has got to be you know the multiple time All Star. Uh, in DeMarcus Cousins, you know, we saw him at the beginning of this year as well. Poor guy, a terrible luck these past couple of years. But uh, we saw him, I believe, have another ACL injury at the beginning of this year or an Achilles. It was one of the two, but, but you know, he had high hopes for joining the Lakers. Uh, a lot of people liked him on there, having two dominant big men that have already played together once, you know, so guys who already had chemistry. So it was a big blow to that Laker team when he got hurt. Um, haven't seen him play all season, so it really depends on how healthy he is, if he is even healthy, and if he even wants to risk coming back for a few months uh, when maybe he has his eyes set on next season. Um, but again, a free agent with the rosters expanding, and if he is healthy, he could be a, a big add to a roster like the Los Angeles Clippers, you know, who who are needing a post presence you know to deal with Anthony Davis down low potentially maybe the Nuggets down low with Jokic uh, so they are needing a dominant big down low who can who can disrupt and get some rebounds get some second chance points and uh, a guy who could who could definitely do that for you is DeMarcus Cousins you know we saw it in game two of the finals last year with Golden State he, he came in gave him 10 11 points about 10 11 rebounds and like six seven eight assists and that was the x factor in that game and that was that was why honestly the warriors ended up stealing that game um i know you know they were riddled with injuries all season but yeah like i like the marcus cousins who didn't even play much all season walked up and, and and had a big performance and and i think that is possible again for him this season if he's healthy he could come into the clippers all you need is one big game from him and, and it's worth it you know signing him with the two extra spots you never even had before. So um, I would also like to see him go with the Lakers, um, considering Dwight and JaVale might not be playing at all. That's leaving uh, about 10 rebounds, you know, to, to the rest of the Laker roster who aren't that big. Um, so so a guy like DeMarcus Cousins could be a good add to the Laker or could re-sign for the Lakers if he is healthy. Um, but again, all depends on his health. But I, I think he is capable of having a big game in the playoffs and, and uh, making uh, a team win a game ordinarily they wouldn't have maybe. Um, so yeah, I like him a lot. I would love to see him get added to a roster. Um, but again, depends on his health. Another, the other big name out there, um, somewhat big name is Isaiah Thomas. You know, we saw him this year in Washington, not really play too well, really just kind of looking to find his place in the league, trying to find where he fits in, you know, his role after being, you know, a first team all NBA point guard, averaging 27 points a game, um, for the Celtics and then, and then, you know, getting hurt and having such a drop off that he did whenever he got moved to Cleveland and LA. Um, but, you know, an all-star, a guy who, in my opinion, is perfect for the six-man role, like a Lou Will, Jamal Crawford. Uh, I, th- I believe that is his role now in the NBA. At least it should be his role now in the NBA. Uh, go and get you 13 to 15 points off the bench. Get you three to five assists, maybe. Um, that, that would be big for a team, especially... Um, needing some guard play, maybe in the Clippers, if, if Patrick Beverly isn't quite there, they need another point guard. You could see him sign there. Um, really depends on what teams are needing. 
what you know players are not wanting to come you know we'll, like i said we're going to find out a lot of information within the next week because i do have to report by the 24th of june um so within the next week or so we're going to see be seeing some moves i think we will see some players get signed um and i think isaiah thomas should be someone at the top of that list He's been there. He's been to the, I believe he's been to the Western Conference Finals, at least the Western Conference Semis. He's he brought the Celtics there. You know he was he was the will, uh, uh, the heart of that Celtics team that year, and was the reason they went as far as they did. Um, but but yeah, I would love to see him get signed. I think it's a shame he's not already on a team right now. Not not having it work out too well with Washington. That team is just you know. Despite being, you know, in the hunt, being or invited to Orlando, d- disappointing season for them. Great season for Bradley Beal. Should have been an All Star by anybody's standards. You know, he was an All Star this year, averaging thirty points. But um, I would love to see Isaiah Thomas added to a team has veteran experience, can can score. The only downside to adding adding him to your playoff roster is, you know, defenses increase. You know, it's harder to score in the playoffs and, and refs tend to somewhat swallow their whistle. I'm gonna talk about that coming forward going forward a little bit too. But but uh yeah it's harder to hard harder to score in the playoffs no matter what. And uh having a guy like Isaiah Thomas could be a little bit of a defensive liability. You know, not a guy you can really rely on to guard the other player's elite point guard. Having him only be what five foot eleven, five foot ten, five foot nine even um, so, so a short player, not a defensive anchor by any means, but an offensive threat, definitely, and a guy who can go get you 12 points off the bench. Um, so I'd love to see him get signed. Another guy, you know, a, a big three-point shooter, Alan Crabb. Uh, hasn't been on a roster for a little bit now. Uh, I, I would love to see him get signed to a team. I think he'd fit great in L.A. and, and the Lakers if they do see Averly Bradley drop out. I say you, you add... Alan Crabb or maybe a guy like Gerald Green uh, who, who who can shoot threes at a high level, defend somewhat, not at a high level, but they can defend as well. Um, Gerald more than Allen, but Allen can definitely knock down a big three-point shot. Um, has started in this league for a while, now has moved to a role to the bench. Uh, I love to see him get picked up. Like I said, a guy like Gerald Green, uh, a veteran in this league for a very long time, can hit a three-point shot, can play some defense, can make plays in the air with his legs. Um, I would love to see him get signed. Uh, again, I don't know how likely that is, but I do think he, he's been in the playoffs before. Uh, so why not add another veteran to your team? I don't see how much. I don't really think that would hurt them that much ultimately. But, but yeah, a guy like Gerald Green is definitely still out there. Uh, and then one of the more upside and one of the more intriguing prospects to me uh, is a guy like Jordan Bell. Okay, Jordan Bell. We saw him in a short couple of years stint with the with the uh, Warriors when, where he was drafted from. Uh, won a couple of championships with them. Was great for their small ball. Would would go in and play the center. Can't can't shoot by any means, but can defend multiple positions, very versatile, a very high motor player. You know, he's going to give everything he has every time he's out there. He's going to be on the ground diving for balls. Uh, can make can make plays with his legs in the air. Um, like I say, can guard multiple positions, the four, the five, maybe even go out to the three. Wouldn't wouldn't bank on him guarding the three, but can, can guard the four or the five. Uh, a young player, uh, that's one of the downsides, uh, even though, you know, he probably will have a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of stamina, you know, will be able to play, but, but a guy who hasn't seen too many game plans, too many rotations and, and not necessarily a guy you can plug into your system and have him translate right away. He's going to have to learn very young player. Re- really didn't see him work out too well in Minnesota. I didn't like him going there in general, them having a big and cat, I like him better as a small ball center rather than a uh, power forward. Uh, I see him being able to do more at the center position. Uh, but a young guy, I think he does have potential to be a starting center in the league. Not by any means like an all-star caliber player, but but can high motor, bring you high minutes, and, and can can defend um, and give gives all he ha- all he has every time he's on the court. You know, from a guy who watched the Warriors a lot over the past few years, so. 
Uh, I like Jordan Bell. I'd love to see him get get onto a team. You know, with Houston, if they are needing you know somewhat of a down low threat, I would love to see Jordan Bell in Houston. Possibly can't really shoot, but but uh, can defend in, in at a high clip. Isn't necessarily a liability like Capella. Uh, he's very similar to Capella. Can't necessarily shoot. I know that's why they got rid of him. Uh, but if they do find themselves needing a little bit more of a threat down low or uh, more presence down low, a, sh- a smaller guy like Jordan Bell. Uh, would be a good fit, I think. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of guys out there. Uh, uh, for this guy, you know, in specific, J.R. Smith, I know why he's not out there right now on a team. You know, I think it does have in large part to do with his his last uh, stint, stunt in Cleveland, uh, how he ended that relationship. And, and also, in the 2018 Finals, we saw him lose a game for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, you know, they they had an opportunity. They had what, five six seconds left on the on the clock to get to get a quality shot after getting the offensive rebound. Um, George Hill could have made the free throw, but again, George Hill misses the free throw. Jr. grabs the rebound and then simply dribbles the ball out for the remaining seconds to push the game into overtime, which he thought would have won them the game. Uh, so, so you know, a guy, not necessarily a high IQ guy, uh, but he can make some big shots. He can play some solid defense on your guards. Um, has been there, has made big shots and big moments. Like I said, he's won a, won a championship with LeBron in Cleveland, LeBron and Kyrie in Cleveland, and, and uh, yeah, can make big shots. But, again, seeing him lose a game for a team in the finals, uh, ultimately a game, like I said, they, they should have won. And uh, having it be basically all his fault, and and uh, yeah, I can't necessarily see past that, and I wouldn't love to add him to my playoff roster uh, right now, especially with all the distractions going on right now. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily love to add J.R. Smith to my roster, but he's still out there, can make some big shots, has made big shots, and I'm still a fan of J.R. Swish. You know, I I, I still. I would love to see him get on a roster eventually, maybe next season. I just don't think this season is right. And the biggest question I have is why this guy is not been has not been signed. Uh, and that's Jamal Crawford. Okay, last time he was in the league, he was on the Phoenix Suns. He dropped fifty points. He's the oldest player ever to drop fifty points. And the fact that he's not on a roster right now. Is kind of jaw dropping to me. Uh, I think he's he's still a good a good guy to have coming off your bench. He can still average, in my opinion, ten to twelve points coming off the bench. Uh, like I said, he averaged or he dropped fifty points last year uh, when he was playing, and and the fact that he has not been signed this entire year is like I said, jaw dropping to me. Maybe they're they're somewhat moving away from these veterans, trying to get more play, new players in there, maybe. The league is tired of Jamal Crawford. You know, he's made, he's been loud. He's been vocal saying it's not his fault. You know, it's not because of him, his choice. He's not playing in the NBA. It's because no team has reached out and signed him, uh, which again, insane to me. I believe Jamal should totally be on a roster. He's in that level with, with, uh, Lou Williams being that elite six man who can come off the bench. I know he's old. It isn't necessarily what he was, but I still think he can come give high minutes to a team, get some offense going, somewhat of a spark plug off the bench. Don't know why he hasn't been signed yet. Don't agree with it. Um, but I would love, and that's a guy who I, I hope, I really, really hope he gets a chance to show he can still play, even if it's for a team that's not really going to make the playoffs. Maybe Phoenix signs him again, or this, I don't know. Maybe a team signs him for the just the eight, just the eight games. You know, a team that's not necessarily going to make the playoffs. Uh, maybe we see a team like the Pelicans sign him who needs some veteran experience, a guy, a locker room presence simply, uh, who can still go out there and play. I would love to see him get added to any roster. I hope he does. I think it's insane he hasn't been yet. Um, but overall, I love I love the NBA expanding the rosters from 15 to 17. I would love to see them do this going forward, not necessarily make it to 17, but in general for the playoffs, if they did add one extra roster spot, um, I would be intrigued, especially with teams that have a lot of injuries, have a guy locked up for a long time, but don't necessarily have the space to add another guy. Uh, this would give teams that a, a opportunity like we are now. I like it a lot, and I hope it's something maybe we see going forward. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take a break. Once I come back, I'm going to talk about three players. Okay, and I, I think three players uh, have the most that have the most to lose or the most to prove in this postseason. Okay, so you don't want to miss that, and then make sure you stick around to the very end of the show 
because I'm going to be discussing Daryl Morey's comments on the Rockets. So don't go anywhere, and I will be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- smcpodcast.com for more info. All right, guys, welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Like I said before the break, I want to talk about three players, uh, the three players that I think have the most to prove this postseason, you know, when playing in Orlando. Uh, I want to start out with number three. I got to do James Harden. You know, he, 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 he has been in Houston now for seven years, okay? Number one says he brought the Houston Rockets to the NBA Finals. Uh, he has only been to the NBA Finals once in his entire career, as we know. Uh, whenever he was with OKC, him, Durant, Russell Westbrook, his co-star now, uh, we saw them get to the NBA Finals. They were very young, obviously got swept off the floor by the by the Heatles, uh, the first championship by LeBron, obviously. Um, but, yeah, he's only been to one Finals, has been to Houston for for seven years now, has been to the Western Conference Finals. Let's see, last year played Golden State, year before played Golden State. I believe a lot to the Spurs before. He's been, to, he's been to the Western Conference Finals, I want to say at least five times. I'm very confident. I know it's four, but I, I want to say at least five times he's been to the Western Conference Finals, and, and including with OKC, and has, has, has never won a championship and has only been to one Finals, yet, yet getting to that Western Conference Finals, you know, many times, and we we remember uh, what last year, you know, he they were up on uh, on Golden State, and and uh, they had a chance to beat them without Kevin Durant, a, a, a chance that they were hoping they had the whole time, the whole season, you know, they said the year prior. Uh, also, they they had the Warriors down with a Kevin Durant healthy, um, so so they were all they were just hoping you know if we got a if we got a somewhat injured warriors team uh they were the ones saying you know, they they could take advantage of that they were the ones saying you know we want to play golden state and then they go and play they go and play golden state go up 3-2 and then blow a 3-2 lead lose two games in a row including a game at home and and uh the NBA, the uh, warriors trot on to win a NBA championship and james harden is there you know with the narrative that he broke down and couldn't do it yet again um, but we, you know, we know, we know what he is. Okay. We know James Harden. He's an MVP. You know, he's a two time scoring champ. He's an assist champ. Uh, he's, he's won the six man of the year award before. So yes, we know James Harden. We know what he, he has to, to bring to the table. Um, but we know the one thing he's really missing is that NBA championship, uh, and and now you know it's it's I don't want to say it's wide open for him, but yes, it's it's as open as ever. Okay, it's as open as ever, and and uh, he now has his 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 co-star and Russell Westbrook, his best friend. You know the guy they made made it to the finals once before. Um, um, you know he's had this uh, great year. He's coming off an MVP caliber season, averaging thirty five points. Um, you know again, he's been to the Western Conference Finals years. Back to back years in a row now, uh, has had disappointing performances though. At the end, okay, and that's been the biggest knock on on James Harden. You know, he's great through the regular season. Uh, you know, he's great. He, he's going to show up basically every night. MVP candidate for years now. Um, however, 
it's in the postseason. You know, you have to wonder, uh, is he going to be there? Is he going to be healthy? Is he going to be not necessarily healthy, but excuse me, is he going to be in the right shape? Because uh, we see him at the very similar to his co-star in Russell Westbrook. We see him somewhat tend to break down at the end of the postseason. The last time we see him play is usually not a very good game from him. Um, and, and uh, yeah, that's been the biggest knock on him. However, this year, you know, they are getting this huge hiatus, this huge time, months of time to rest and get their bodies right for an NBA season push. I know you're the only way you're ready to play five on five basketball is by playing five on five basketball. And they haven't quite had a chance to do that, but he's had time to rest, get his body right. I think I've seen him lose some, some weight. Uh, he, he's looking to be in, in great shape. Uh, so, so yes, he has a lot to prove this season because like I said, the, the biggest knock on him is, you know, he's great through the regular season. He's a great regular season player. However, in the postseason, does he have what it takes to bring his team to an NBA championship? I think he is a, a caliber of a player who can be the best player on a championship caliber team. I do think he's that guy. However, I don't know if Russell Westbrook and him, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sold 100% on that relationship, on, on that duo. However, you know, they are a couple of the best players in the world, and, and, uh, yeah, it's it's as wide open as ever this year. Um, there's no Golden State juggernaut to run into in the Western Conference Finals. You are going to have to play a, a very deep Clippers team, uh, a very good Lakers team. Uh, but but there's no Golden State, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green juggernaut. That's gone. And, and they have a chance now more than ever, I believe, um, even though they, they had the highest chance of knocking Golden State off in general. When they were still, you know, in their run, uh, but yeah, this is this is his time, I believe. You know, if he is going to get it done, it, 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 must, it needs to be soon. And uh, the championship is the one thing I really do think that he is missing. Uh, I hope he can get it, but yeah, that's one thing he's missing, and I do think he's a lot to prove this year because if he again falls short, if he again falls short, I know it is going to affect you know our our views on him. It already has until this point. If we've seen him get to multiple finals, if not win an NBA finals, I know he'd be higher on all of our lists, top ten right now, all time. He'd be higher. Um, that's the one thing he's missing. Uh, we'll see if he can go out and get it. Number two, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Okay, last year's MVP, uh, um, yeah, this year's top runner, you know, front runner for MVP more than likely. I'll, I'll do a video or I'll do a podcast most likely next week talking about the MVP. I'll keep you guys posted on that. But last year's MVP, if not this year's MVP, we'll just say he's a back to back MVP you know, as of right now because he is the, the, the front runner. Um, best record in, in the NBA right now, him and his Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, only, however, you know, however, this is why he, he, he does have some to prove. He, he's proven it for the regular season over the past couple of years by winning an MVP award. Uh, you know, we know what you can do through the regular season. You can be the number one seed in the East or the Eastern Conference. We know. However, only two playoff series win wins in his entire career. I believe he's been in Milwaukee six to seven years now, at least six. Two playoff series wins in that entirety of his time there. Both came last year. Prior to last year, zero playoff series wins. Okay? Last year in the Eastern Conference Finals, we saw it happen. Okay? We saw him go up against Giannis. Uh, sorry, him go up against uh, Kawhi. Milwaukee versus Toronto. We saw Milwaukee get to a very hot start. Go 2-0 at home. Uh, after that, we saw Paul Pierce saying, you know, series is over. Uh, they don't have a chance. The Raptors don't. Bucks are sweeping. From then to that point on, uh, Milwaukee doesn't win a game, and, and Toronto takes over the series, in large part uh, to do with Kawhi Leonard. He was watching, you know, Giannis play the first couple of games. They simply figured out why he was being so dominant, why they couldn't stop him. They were letting him beat them okay they were letting him beat them and they couldn't do that they couldn't let him you know they couldn't cut everybody else off and just let him beat them because he's good enough to let if you let him get to his game get to his spots he'll beat you okay 
Uh, you have to get him off of his game. You have to get him away from his spots. And that's exactly what Kawhi and the, the Toronto Raptors did. Uh, they, they, knew, they knew that, hey, hey, this guy doesn't necessarily like to shoot outside jump shots. This guy thrives in the paint, grabbing other people's rebounds and going right up again with them. He loves driving. You know, he, no one can basically stop him while driving to the fourth. He's very LeBron-esque in, in, in that uh, way of his game. I compare him to a seven-foot or, or a skinny shack with with a ball handle you know he can handle the ball he, he's dominant down low no one can honestly stop him even centers um and and uh unless again unless you can build the wall around the hoop which toronto did you know they they metaphorically and physically you know put th- two three guys down there in the paint basically cut off his will his way to the basket we saw him struggle his percentages dropped his field goal um, um his points dropped everything came down uh we saw him get exposed and then we, we we saw you know maybe Giannis isn't isn't the isn't the guy we thought he was right now you know he was having the season last year which is insane having 30 points like 13 12 rebounds what he is this year as well um but people were basically crowning him to be the next best player the king of the nba and and uh him getting you know exposed in in that or Eastern Conference Finals last year, really, uh, at least for me, you know, on my on my list, I couldn't put him I, before that. I definitely had him over Kawhi, you know, just because of his he's seven feet tall, what he can do, he brought the, you know what he's done for Milwaukee. But then whenever I saw them play, I was like, shoot, I don't think he's as good as Kawhi Leonard. I don't know if he can do all of the things he can, and he, he honestly can't to this point. Point this point. Uh, Kawhi's a better jump shooter. That's basically what he has on him, but that's a big thing to have, and that's honestly why I think Kawhi is the better player right now. Um, you know, Giannis again. Yeah, Kawhi has proven. You know, he's he has two championships now. Uh, he, he 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 he's proven to us that he's developed the mid range jump shot, a shot that we've all somewhat gone away from. Now he's somewhat shown us. You know, don't go away. This is still an elite shot in the NBA. Um, so yeah, we saw him get exposed last year. As of right now, the the heat or sorry the East, you know it's as open as ever, and I don't think it's ever or in the in the coming years, I don't think it's going to get any easier for Giannis and the Bucks. Okay, uh, so this year, you know, so you have LeBron left the East, Kawhi left the East, KD and Kyrie, the two best players, are, are you know are those two are together. That that's the, my, my favorite in the Eastern Conference. Those two players are not playing. He simply has to play the Raptors, a good team, not a great team, and, and the the Celtics, uh, a very good team. Uh, I think that's going to be honestly the hardest thing before getting to the finals. If if Giannis can make it there, um, that's going to be the hardest team for him to play would be the Celtics. But again, no LeBron, no Kawhi, no KD and Kyrie to play before the finals. It's as open as ever, and and uh, it's only going to get harder for him going forward. And I think he honestly has the most approved this season because if he does get to the finals, if not win the finals, he he's getting propelled on my list from my top ten list. He, I, I, if you guys listened last week, I had him or sorry on Monday, I had him at number four on my on my top ten list uh, of players currently playing in the NBA. If he goes out and wins the NBA championship, if if he beats the Clippers in the finals, maybe beats LeBron in the in the Lakers in the finals. He's getting propelled from number four to number two, one. He's in that range, you know what I mean. So he definitely has a lot to prove and a lot to gain from a lot from success this postseason. Um, but he also has a lot to lose, you know. If he does go out in the Eastern Conference Finals again, if if we see his weakness get exposed yet again, and that's the reason we see them lose, I'm gonna think I'm not gonna think he's as great a player as I do right now. If I see it happen again. Um, but I have faith in him. That's why if you listen to my postseason prediction last week, or sorry, I keep saying last week, it was Monday. Uh, if you listen to that on Monday, I, I predict the Bucks getting to the NBA finals. So I do think he's, he is capable and is ready to get over the hump and make it to the finals and prove to us he, he can get there. I don't know if he has enough to, to win the NBA finals. That's another discussion, but, but I think he does have enough to get there by the will of himself, how, how great he is. Uh, but if he doesn't, I think that's going to affect how I view him on my top 10 list or on my list of players right now. Um, 
Number one, I think a lot of player, people can agree with me here. The most the person who has the most to gain this this postseason, most to prove, has got to be LeBron James. Okay, after last year's uh, off year for him, being called the washed king, you know, um, not making the playoffs his first year in LA, in which you had insanely high expectations. People had you winning fifty games. You guys win what thirty maybe. Uh, so. Disappointing year is first year in LA. Lakers fans expect championships, let alone playoff appearances. Um, so he let them down his first year. Obviously, he experienced his first major injury in his entire career. Uh, but yes, uh, last year people called him the Wash King. However, you know this year we see him being a number one seed in the Western Conference. You know he has an All Star caliber teammate in Anthony Davis. He doesn't have to play the Warriors if he does make it to the finals or the, the Western Conference finals. He doesn't have to play KD, Le, uh, Steph, Clay, Draymond, very similar to that uh, James Harden discussion. You know, the Golden State Warriors kept getting in LeBron's way. He was able to beat them once, wasn't able to beat the ultimate juggernaut with KD. Um, but he doesn't have to deal with KD this year, who, in my opinion, is the second best player in the league when healthy. He doesn't have to play that guy. He doesn't have to play Steph Curry and the Warriors, who have who have beaten him many times in the finals. So, so that's gone. Also, you know, he has multiple people more than ever, uh, you know, chasing that title of best player in the world. Giannis is chasing it. People say Kawhi is chasing it. KD is obviously always after it. A guy like Luka Doncic, an up and coming star going forward. Could be a player I see getting into, into that discussion. A guy like Zion, who knows? So, so there are tons of guys who are chasing LeBron, chasing that crown to be the number one. You know, and LeBron's in his seventeenth season. It's it's no question that you know he doesn't have too much left in the tank. I think he has another solid three to four years left after this. Um, but yeah, year seventeen has a ton of people coming after his crown. Uh, currently, is three and six in the NBA Finals. Uh, in my opinion, again, all this is in my opinion, he's the only player in the discussion, uh, with Michael Jordan, you know, as far as the best player ever, he's the only guy I, I, those are the two guys at the top of my list all time, you know, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, no other people and no other players can touch those two guys in my opinion. Um, but in, like I said, he's the only person other than Michael in that goat debate, in my opinion. Um, you can say whoever you want. Again, I'm not, that's not the discussion right now. Um, but if he can go and win another NBA finals, another championship, he would be the first player to win a finals, a finals and win a finals MVP on three different teams. Okay. He'd be the first player ever to do that. He would win in the Eastern conference as well as the Western conference. Um, so yes, I see that. Very propelling his all-time argument. A lot of people are saying he's simply missing the the other championship. When he first went to L.A., we heard people saying if he does win in L.A., that might be enough for me to call him the GOAT. So so there are, you know, I think there's a tremendous amount of upside. He has much more to prove, ultimately, than Giannis and James Harden do, who both have much more time left in their careers. Um Again, that's, that's, I think it's important. They do still have a whole lot to prove. That's why they're on my list. But LeBron is number one. You know, if he does win this NBA championship, we could see him getting propelled in that GOAT debate, that discussion with him and Michael Jordan, you know, which ultimately is not something you can say about Giannis or anybody else in the league today. Um, so ultimately, that's why I believe he has the most to prove. Again, coming off last season, he has an all-star caliber teammate, which is what he said he needs to win an NBA Finals, you know. So he has the pieces he, he seems to need, um, and it's simply time to go, for him to go out and prove that he's still the best player in the league, and that uh, maybe he's the best player ever. You know, maybe he maybe he is. And if he was, wins another Finals and another Finals MVP on a third team, it's going to be hard to debate with him, or at least it's going to be easier to debate for him, you know, be on his side. Um, those are my top three, James Harden, Giannis, and LeBron. Those are the three guys I think have the most to prove uh, in this postseason. However, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break. When I come back, don't go anywhere because I'm talking more about those Houston Rockets. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about their GM and the comments he made on their roster. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the final segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast. I'm Casey Foreman. Uh, and like I said, I want to talk about the Rockets, the Houston Rockets, uh, specifically because their GM, Daryl Morey, has been in the news recently uh, for another big statement. Okay, I think something, as far as Daryl Morey goes, when, when I think of him, I think of him you know, declaring these big, these big statements. Uh, the one that I'm discussing right now is that, you know, in his opinion, I know he's the Rockets GM and needs to say that no matter what, but he said, you know, having James Harden and Russell Westbrook on the team, uh, the, the Rockets should win the NBA Finals this year. They, sh- they should win the Finals this year, in his opinion. Again, he's the GM. Every GM, I think, should feel that way. Um, but for you to say they they should win, you know, I and I think I, I understand you saying I like our chances a lot. Uh, I think we're a really good team. I think we can compete with any team out there. But for him to come out and say I think we should win the finals this year is kind of putting a target on Houston's back, unnecess- you know, unnecessarily. And and uh, but again, this isn't this isn't crazy for Dale Morey to come out and say. Okay, he is very a whole lot of confidence in his team. And his players and James Harden and Russell Westbrook. He's come out and said in the past, you know, in, in his opinion, uh, James Harden is the best scorer ever. Uh, so it's just statements like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily surprised he came out and said this. He's, like I guess, kind of known for saying these big statements like that. Uh, and, you know, good for him. He, he has faith in his team. I don't want to take anything away from that. But I want to, what I want to do now is talk about some of the Rockets stats and see if we can get to the same outcome as them, you know, should they win the finals? Are, are they the favorites? You know what I mean? Let's see how he got to that conclusion and see if we even, can we even get to that conclusion? So I'll, I like to start with the good, you know? I'm a glass half full kind of guy, so let's start with the good stuff. Uh, right now in the league, the, the Houston Rockets have a number two, uh, they're, num- they're second in the entire league in their offen- offensive rating. So number two in offense. Uh, so we know what they can do. They have two very high caliber offensive players in James Harden and Russell Westbrook. So very good. Uh, there's, there's a pro for you, you know, number two offense rating, offensive rating in the entire league. Wow, that's pretty freaking good, right? Yeah. If I just look at that, maybe they are, maybe they should win the finals this year. Let's keep going fourth in the league in pace you know how fast they play the game how fast their pace is they're four in the entire league fast pace we saw it with the Warriors you know we see it translating to success not always but if done effectively and right uh it it can be a very effective system we I know the Mike D'Antoni system the seven seconds that's what he likes to get a shot very quick uh right now a three-point shot is usually what they're taking if James Harden Obviously, the trade with Russell Westbrook has opened up the paint more than ever. When he gets the ball, obviously, he's looking to drive to the paint, if not kick out to James for the three. Um, but, yeah, very fast offense, looking to get a sh- as many shots up as possible, as many threes up as possible. Um, so, yeah, fourth in the league in pace. Pretty good. Uh, they have two of the top ten players, two top ten players in the league, in my opinion. Again, if you listen to my list last week, at the very end of the show, or I keep, I said it again, Monday. It's not last week. If you listen to my show on Monday, at the very end of the show, I gave you, you guys my top ten current NBA players. Uh, Russell Westbrook was number ten on that list. I believe James Harden was their sixth or seventh on that list. So, in my opinion, you know, both of those guys are top ten NBA players right now. 
James Harden, we know what he does. You know, we saw him win an MVP, averaging 35 points a game. First got to do that since Kobe and, and uh, Michael Jordan. He's in discussions with Will, Michael Jordan, uh, for scoring titles or, or for scoring achievements. Uh, two guys who are almost untouchable when you think of scoring, Wilt and MJ. And, and James Harden does get thrown into that conversation. He has records and stuff like that with, this, with the names of Wilt Chamberlain and Michael Jordan. So that's a huge honor for him. We know what he can do. Uh, Russell Westbrook, the triple-double machine. Uh, first player to average a triple-double since Oscar Robinson. Did it for back-to-back seasons. Uh, how effective that was for his team is another discussion. But no- nevertheless, he did it. He recreated that stat line. You know, uh, Maybe he, you know, he showed everyone that it's more doable than ever in today's NBA. But not taking anything away from him. Did something no one has done in in years in the NBA, okay, decades, and and uh, yeah, huge props to him. We know what he can do. We know what those two players are together. They have been to the NBA Finals together. I know, like I said, uh, two top ten players uh, simply lost to LeBron in, in Miami uh, and, and outmatched for that for that Miami team when they played. You know, OKC okay, so played them, um, but now, however, let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the bad, you know, some of the cons to this uh, Houston Rockets team. So right now, uh, they're 16th in defensive rating. Okay, so they're 16th basically in defense in the league. Not not great on the bottom half. Their assist percentage, assists, 29th in assist percentage. So they're not, despite getting a lot of shots up, you know, having a very fast pace, not a whole lot of assisting going on. I know James Harden and Russell Westbrook, guys who definitely get a lot of assists. Don't get me wrong. Um, but as far as assist percentage, 29th in the league. So a lot of ISO ball. Both those guys are known for having the ball in their hands for a long period of time. Maybe passing the ball at the end of the shot clock. Uh, chucking up a lot of shots prior to then. But but yeah, both those guys are known for, for ISO, having the ball in their hands, and it shows in, in their percentage, you know, uh, 29th in assist percentage. Also 29th in assist to turnover ratio. Okay, so assist to turnover ratio, 29th. Also, you know, we know they're shooting a whole lot of threes, if not the most threes in the league. They're jack- we saw them in the Western Conference Finals last year, miss like 18, 19, 20 straight three-pointers, which is ultimately why they ended up losing that game even though they held Steph Curry to, Steph Curry to uh, zero points in the first half, which is insane. But, uh, yeah, 29th in, a, uh, 29th in assist to turnover ratio, and then 25th, yeah, like I said, in rebounding. So they're shooting a whole lot of threes, but they're not necessarily getting all their rebounds. You know, trading, trading away Clint Capella, they're only down low post-force. Uh, I know he was making a whole lot of money, made up, cleared up some cap space for your team, which was needed. You know, having those two highly paid stars in Russell and James. Uh, but either way, you know, you, you don't have that down low force that you used to. wasn't uh, an all time force, you know, but uh, definitely an all star level of play in Clint Capella. And and uh, I, I even though we saw a lot of success in Russell Westbrook and that style of play, you know, we saw him averaging 30-something points a game when they first traded Clint Capella, and he was doing great, thriving, driving to the lane more than ever because we know with Russell, not, not so much an outside jump shooter, thrives getting to the lane, getting to the paint, getting fouled, or, you know, getting contact, getting that layup, that, that ferocious dunk that he's known for. Um so yeah, not known for his rebound, not known for his shooting. Having Clint Capella out is, I think there is, there are more pros just because on the offense, I think offense is always going to beat defense. And, and I think there are more pros on the offensive side to, to trading Clint. Uh, as far as what you got back for him, just like a Robert Covington, that obviously is not, obviously when you, when you trade the star or when you trade the best player, you're, you're not ultimately going to wind up, you know, with the names, you're not going to get the best name back usually. When you trade a guy, you know, with the name at Click Capella, when you get a name back, usually not going to be to the same caliber. Um, and we saw them getting a guy like uh, like Robert Robert Covington. You know, uh, I think he'll be playing the stretch five for him at like six foot seven, six foot eight. He is. Um, so yeah, not having a down low force, I think, is really going to hurt them. However, in the playoffs, if they do get a chance to play, I know they're they're going to be most likely playing Denver in that first round, and if they do. Man, we're going to see Nikola Jokic get a whole lot of twos down low, a whole lot of rebounds. Uh, however, you know, is 
them, you know, them playing more on the paint, more on the perimeter, is going to force Jokic to go out on the outside more. You know, leave that paint uh, because all five guys on that Rockets roster who are playing usually can shoot the three ball, so you're going to have to guard them out at that three point line. So Jokic won't be able to sit there in the paint more than likely. Um, unless they decide that, that that fifth guy is a guy they're going to leave open at all times. They're going to make that fifth guy beat them and clog the paint up, make Russell Westbrook stay outside, which is what I would do if I was the Denver Nuggets. I don't think Robert Covington is going to beat you. I would leave him open on the corner more than like more than usual, and I would stay down low in the paint if I was Jokic. Um, but still... You know, they're going to be playing teams like the Nuggets, maybe like the Lakers if they make it to the Western Conference Finals and match up that way. But they're get, potentially going to be playing teams who have some post threats and they don't have anybody on the defensive end to neglect that or to, to disrupt that. Um, again, against Denver, I like, I like their odds since they have the two superstars. I think Yoke or, uh, Westbrook and Harden can definitely beat a Jokic and, and Jamal Murray in, in the Denver Nuggets, but, um, as far as them beating, you know, a uh, L.A. Clipper team or a, a, a uh, Los Angeles Lakers team, I don't necessarily love it. I wouldn't necessarily be betting for them. And we see it. I talked about it on Monday for the postseason odds to win. Um, the Rockets haven't been on that list pretty much all year. At the beginning of the year, they were given the Sixers and, and the Jazz a higher percentage to win the finals. Uh, then the Houston Rockets. And, and I think... Yeah, that's because I don't I don't know if their translation of play is postseason. You know, if if it ha- is enough to go the long haul, we'll see. Uh, I'm glad that Daryl Morey has at least has the confidence in his team. You know, to come out and say we should win the finals. Excuse me, we should win the finals. You know, we have two two all time players and James Harden and Russell Westbrook, which they do. Um, I do think this year is as open as ever. Like I talk, said when I was talking about James earlier, this is if 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 James Harden is to win an NBA Finals and uh, to win a championship, his easiest route would have to be this year. I'm not saying it's easier, but I think next year the Clippers are just going to get you know another year under their belt, more chemistry, if not be even better next year. LeBron and Anthony Davis. Uh, don't know if they'll be even better next year, but I don't think they'll be any worse. Okay, they're not going anywhere if if he stays in L.A. The 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 Golden State Warriors are going to be nothing but back next season. KD and Kyrie are back next season, so if anything, it's going to get harder from here on out. So if the Ro- Rockets do, you know, need to win, they do need to win. But you know, if they want to win that NBA championship, now's the time to do it. It says open as ever um, with all the all the injuries and the teams that are out. Um, so yeah, it's as open as ever, and and if 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 it's the time, you know, now is the time for those Houston Rockets. However, I don't necessarily agree. I don't think they should win or will win. I see them going to the. I know they'll make it to the. I I have confidence in them making it to the Western Semi Conference Finals against the Clippers. I think they will match up with either the Clippers or the Lakers in one of those matchups. Uh, and I don't love them against either team. I think they match up pretty well against the Clippers since they don't necessarily have a, a post threat, uh, a lot of small ball. So the Rockets and Clippers, I think, are very well uh, to play with each other. Very good matchups. However, uh, I like the Clippers defensively. Like I said on Monday, they have a much better defensive team, defensive game plan against a coach in Mike D'Antoni who doesn't necessarily believe in defense. Um yeah, I don't necessarily see it this year, but if if they are going to win it, if they if anytime soon, this is the wide open opportunity for them. Um, like I said, I have all the respect in the world for Daryl Morey, him coming out and saying this. However, uh, uh, they just got a new owner recently, and if we see them again have not have the success they 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 have wanted and and they are expecting saying they should win the finals maybe we see a change at that GM position at Daryl Morey I think he's done a pretty pretty good job so far I don't know about the move with Russell Westbrook getting I know the re- relationship with Chris Paul and James Harden seemed to be sour and not recoverable so maybe that was the reason the biggest reason you know they ended up getting Russell Westbrook in there I know Russell and James are best friends seem to you know play with a decent amount of chemistry but as far as their games matching up, you know, we'll see. They've only had one season so far, so I don't want to see it blown up quite yet. I at least would like to see it for a whole nother season. Like I said, though, this is the season for them. If they can win it all, I'm super excited. Uh, also, like I said, I think this next week we're going to be getting a whole lot more of information uh, because June 24th or the 26th is the 
deadline for the NBA players uh, to tell the NBA, tell the league that if they're going to be reporting to Orlando or not. So uh, if we see some players on some notable teams not not going, we could see some names like you know Demarcus Cousins, Isaiah Thomas, Jordan Bell, Jamal Crawford, maybe get signed uh, to these teams. It really depends on the players who are going. Um, but that's going to be it for this episode of GSMC Basketball Podcast. Really appreciate everybody listening. I'm going to be right back here on Monday. Uh, go ahead and listen. I know we have a new guy, Nick. Uh, Bryce is still doing his podcast, so make sure you guys go check them out. And if you enjoyed today's show, I want to encourage you to go on Twitter, follow our, our new Twitter account. I'm trying to spri- uh, you know, get that page up and going a little bit, so go check us out on Twitter. Please continue to follow us and support all of our podcast hosts. Again, thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys next week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program